Hi, Tech Rabbit here. So, let's get some floppies installed. So, here's the um, support platform. I took it out of the case. And then it should mount the floppy disk drives here. So, it's actually going to be. Um, one floppy disk drive there. And then, actually, it's going to be a GoTech on this side. I thought I'd just show how I'm going to put this together and then uh, help anybody who wants to do approximately the same process. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this platform out. And I actually prepared for that. Uh, I actually put um, some thumb screw screws on this to make it easier to take out. I'll just lift that off. So I took the plate out, and then this is the front side. And then we're just going to, so this actually has the original um, spacers here, and these are actually five millimeters. And they're actually extremely hard to get if you don't get them with the drive. So it's uh, very odd, but these, when you buy them uh, in a package or something, then it's like six millimeters is the close you can get, but I have a, I have this drive with the original five millimeter one, so that I'm going to install on there. So let's assemble this one. Actually, it should be on this side because this is kind of like Omega 2000 first this drive, and then that's the second. So anyway, now we're going to um, try and fix the GoTech and that actually has no non-threaded holes here. <laughs> I'm going to have to try and figure out a solution to get it mounted. And um, when I've solved the issue then I will be back with a solution. So I started working on this and uh, what I purchased is a bezel. But, um, wraps around the GoTech to make it the same physical size as the disk drive. And this here screws to the to the case. So it's like this. And um, then I've been testing how to install it. It has to like align up height-wise so that it will be right next to that there. And then I've been thinking I will use these kind of spacers that have a hole in it. And I have one. Oh, I hope it fall. doesn't fall now. So I bought this kind of kit which has different different heights in it. So in uh, theory, it should, based on what I've been measuring, it should be 8 millimeters the height. And then I'm going to put a screw from underneath. So. I'm going to give it a try. So, I've got some, um, got the washers, the screws, length 18 millimeters. It's not really that critical, it's this hole. Um, it actually goes, it doesn't hit any electronics or anything, so you can actually have have a longer screw, but um, those are 18 millimeters, and then the spacers. And that should do it. So I'm going to try and <laughs> screw it together and see what happens. So <coughs> I was able to. Um, it's probably not easy to show on the camera, but I was able to create threads in here in this hole quite easily with this. Um, with the screw. Now in my case one of these holes was blocked <coughs> so I had to push it through. But if you not if you don't want to do it without knowing what's on the other side then it's easy just open you just unscrew these three screws and then the top comes off and then you can actually get access to the, to the inside and see where the um, holes are. But uh, there's nothing in the way of these holes so, uh, if you're using um, if you're using these um, three millimeter screws, then um, 
you won't have any interference problem. So, here we are. Install, let's see if I can show. So, because I have a little bit too long screws, I had to actually add a spacer here underneath. One of the things I didn't want to cut the screw because then it ruins the thread going into the plastics. So I actually just kept put that there. And so I don't know what happened, but this actually this spacer turned out to be um, uh, ten millimeters to actually get it central. And I thought it was like eight. But, uh, a bit so it's not it's not really flat like it's supposed to because uh, this is about, this is going to be on the um, cover uh, screwed into the cover yeah so anyway that was a bit of a surprise that it, it actually wasn't the distance wasn't eight millimeters it was ten to get it to align up with the disc station but um yeah i don't think these will be in the way of anything uh, so anyway Moving on to the next part, which is um, going to be power and data. So, that's it. So I got this kind of a power divider and um, those that have been watching my previous videos, I've got an ATX power supply, so then I'll just plug one of them. And it has this type of Molex connector for power, quite a few. It's an older style. Power supply, and then this is a flat cable, um, which is relatively long. But I want it long because then I can actually take the center support platform off and have it on the side when I'm working on the motherboard, so I can still actually have the disc connected. Um, yeah, and then um, as I showed before, then this is uh, the jumpers chain, so this is DF1. And this is a flat cable, so that so that's why you have to change the jumper setting on the, on the disk drive. If you have a twisted cable, then you don't. And you keep these both as DFO zero. Okay, so now I'm going to put this back on the um, whatever one calls it, this crossbar support <coughs> where the power supply and discs sit. So it's screwed into place. And then the next time I'm going to take this and, and screw it onto the cover. So anyway, now we're in the assembly corner and um, put the crossbar in place and everything seems to be okay, so that's screwed in. And then um, take a look at the cover. So hopefully you can see. So I glued in also this kind of a cover cover this um, 525 opening and then I put this here and the one of the problems I ran into is that actually this only has screws on this side and I wanted to have the um, USB drive over here so I have to glue it in and um, you might be upset that I'm using glue but this is actually good glue this is uh, construction glue uh, pretty generic and um, the good thing with this is that if you want to get rid of it, it it's it's sticky enough to keep these in place but when you want to remove it then you can you can like peel off the um, the glue so it actually doesn't it, it, it won't leave any residue on when you remove it so that's how it looks in the front and um, now I'm going to insert the cover on top of here and to, um, Avoid unintentional swearing because <laughs> this can actually be just even without the, the additional drives can be difficult to get on. I'll be back when I got it on. Oh, good thing that I turned the camera off. It was quite a lot of curse <laughs> because I mean the thing is you need to adjust the actual um, platform that the discs sit on, and then you need to also at the same time adjust the discs and then try and get the alignment okay and now i've screwed it in place um, 
and um, I think that's the best I can do. There's a bit of a larger gap in between these drives that I would have liked to have had, but there's really nothing I can do about it. So, yeah, the basal is what it is, and the disc is what it is. And if I maybe I could move the disc a little bit that way to like close the so it would be half gap there and half gap there, but then it looks stupid here then. So I don't know. It, a little you have to make a compromise. And then this hole is also covered. So now it's looking pretty good. So anyway, that's how you um, handle the physical installation of um, the disc drives and um, also a bit of the uh, you know electrical wiring and for power supply wiring and data cables. And um, if you're interested to see this being put into finalized and put into operation then um, stay tuned because uh, I still have as you notice there's no motherboard in here so uh, uh, I have some planned um, improvements on the motherboard the motherboard is working but I, I, I think there are two two issues I'd like to address and I'll do that in a follow-up video so um, consider subscribing hit the bell icon so you get notified when that hits the internet and uh, I'll see you in the next one two thumb screws in place. Now that I know the adjustment is okay. do get better at putting the cover on when you practice. Do it like 20 times in there. <laughs> you start actually getting it right. So I'm just going to some screws on so I can, I can store it while I work on the motherboard. Because that's kind of like a little odd. So, I'll keep that together and the alignment of the discs seems to be still okay. So that was also a test of the, the alignment didn't get messed up when I put the thumbnail screws. Yeah, now it's the end.